Welcome to the Elk Season Podcast, Season 3, Episode 9. Nine. Very All good. Right. It is March 21st, 2024, 161 days until Elk Season. We are the Chambers Brothers. My name is Harold. I'm David. And tonight on the Elk Season Podcast. Look, elk use humans for a change. And we have a fun fact about elk and their fur. Uh, we're going to talk about poaching a little bit. Some interesting poaching stories. Big cats, smart 12-year-old, grizzlies in Cali, something about a boulder. All that and probably a little bit more on the Elk Season Podcast. So, been a couple weeks. Yeah. Had to take a week off. Yeah. Yeah. How was the, what was the, what was the, was the program at the school? Yeah, program okay. at the school. Fair we enough. had a spring concert. It's the last concert of the year. And uh, uh, my little guy, Zandrick, was uh, performing and he was smack center. In fact, we, we sat kind of in the back because it gets kind of packed there quickly, even though we live half a block away. Right. By the time you get, <laughs> everybody's there. But we sat smack dab in the center of, of where we were at, but it gave us a direct view to him, and he was smack center on the oh, stage. Perfect. So it was actually really cool. Good. And uh, he just sang his little heart out and had a good time. So, Yeah, I've had a, a couple crazy weeks. We've had some, uh, some pretty crazy weather come through. Yesterday it was 70 degrees. Yeah. Here in Twin Falls. And it's, it has been yesterday, beautiful. Yesterday was the first day of spring. First officially. day of spring. Which, which marked... 162 days till elk season. Yeah, it's 161 now, today. Right? Yeah. yeah, but just, yeah, but, I, but you think of elk season. In during elk season, we get the fall equinox. L- right, exactly. Or solstice. Exactly. Whatever. By so, the time by the time six months rolls around and, and the equinox comes around, there is we're going to be hot and heavy into it. Yeah. So we are. I think we talked about this last time too. We are on the downhill slide. We yeah. Are, we are closer to elk than, than we are away from elk closer season. to the next one than we were to the last one. Yeah. Oh, I'm so and, not uh, ready. I've been thinking about it because I'm feeling better uh, after my hernia surgery and and starting to get starting. Uh, I'm now able to start ramping up, you know, exercise routine, yard work, lifting. I've got a lot of dirt to move. You don't happen to know anybody who needs some dirt or some <laughs> some old sod, do you? Uh, put it on Craigslist. No, somebody will want I, it. I, I just take. Doesn't the uh, transfer station have a an organic section? It's where you can take your um, leaves and trash, uh, or not trash, but I bet you if you called them and I, said, "Hey, I, where can I get get rid of some clean fill dirt?" Yeah, that's yeah. Well, it, technically, uh, it's clean. I'll pull out all the rusty nails that the darn construction people left behind. Yeah, but it's not full of oil and no, it's not no, weird it's, stuff. It's just fill. It's dirt. good stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, that's what we're gonna do with it. Just, but that gives me more opportunity to exercise and move and uh, lift heavy stuff. And I've got, I've still got yeah. a bunch of dirt to remove. But I realize I have nowhere to put this. And we stacked up all this sod and. <laughs> no, it's just like, what am I stacking this for? Like, till I move it again. I don't know. Sell it for ten dollars on Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll just get rid of it. Get yourself some Twinkies. Oh, now, now, you, now, now yeah. all of a sudden, I, I, okay, the script has changed. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, on Craigslist. Okay, I have my wolf class this Saturday. Ooh, nine to four. So we'll have some some really cool stuff. I should have some really cool stuff to talk about next week on the Elk Season Podcast. Uh, I'm excited about it. I went and picked up my fishing license yesterday. I have not done this yet. And I, it was just yesterday when I did I it. know. but I, I got my whole sportsman's package. And I also got my trap fur bearer license. And that was like an extra 50. Oh, dear. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. I don't even know why I got it. <laughs> well, because I, I I took the education course and I wanted my license, so I don't well, know what to do with it now. What what I would say is this: I'm not, I don't know to what extent this works at the Idaho Fishing Game now, but they have a grandfather clause. So if you yeah. buy your license and you maintain that license, you will always pay the price you you paid when you originated that license. If you took a gap year and didn't buy your license, you come back, you're gonna have to pay the new current price if they've upped the price since the last time oh, you got your really? license. So as long as you maintain your license, it should always be the same price oh. that it has been, but they've been increasing prices uh, since that, and that's been about five or six years since that was initiated. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and now okay. I'm I'm pretty sure that's still in effect because I've been paying the same for my sportsman's package, but I think it's gone up for the for uh, if if you're a newbie into it. Yeah, I mean it probably wasn't that much. It probably wasn't fifty bucks. 
It was probably because I bought, but yeah, new fishing rod and. <laughs> but 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 saying that about you know you you bought it now because if you maintain that license, yeah, you're not paying more. Yeah, the I price think I'm going to need it to to trap wolves anyway. Yeah. So I'm, I I just grabbed it since I was thinking about it. Yeah. So my my course is coming up. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions I'm going to have answered. I'm going to have a lot of questions too. <laughs> after this uh, wolf trapping class, still looking for a mentor. Uh, need somebody to go out with once or twice this next winter. My five year plan is to be to have a regular uh, a regular trapping line for wolves in. Um, in the Pioneer Zone of Idaho, okay, and the Lost River Range, oh, which is yeah. to, to go up through Arco and be able to branch off both sides. Um, I'm going to talk to fishing game officials up there um, and see, and and because they know fishing game officials up there know the other trappers, right? And they have good relationships with them. That's and a so, good strategy. I think. Yeah, where where can I go that I'm not buttoned into anybody? And is there somebody that can mentor me through any of this? this mess what i'm trying to do yeah that's a good idea and so, I, I, that's something i learned uh in college surprisingly it's something i probably learned before that but it sunk in in college that you know go to places where things are established see what they're doing and yeah. see if you can make connections and then it can help you on your way yeah so, a, a fabulous strategy yeah so we'll see and then five years is my expectation i maybe in two or three i'll be trapping but five years before i'm any good at it <laughs> before i expect to see results <laughs> That way I can manage my expectations a little bit better. So um, so I'm excited about that, and I'll be able to talk lots about it, I'm sure, next week. Excellent. Continuing with the wolf, okay. um, the very, very interesting. What we talk about a lot here on the Elk Season podcast is where humans, where, the, where, where human habitation borders wildlife habitation. Yes, and and there's a very interesting correlation that's been made in this story that was posted by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Okay. And that is elk using the proximity of human settlements to, what? to keep wolves away. Oh. Wolves are so good at staying away from humans. They know they're being hunted. They know the relationship. Wolves wow. know. We've... All the dogs come from wolves, right? Yeah. Wolves well, understand. Supposedly, yeah. Okay. Well, according to the conventional understanding of I think there was a study evolution. recently that showed okay. that there were some some other things. So it, it's, yes, wolves, <laughs> but there were some other. Oh, uh, sure. It's been a but, long time, too. Yeah. And so there's been a lot of weird sort of speciation events. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't even. I like how you phrase that, though. Speciation events makes sense. Yeah. So. So, which is a wrong statement to make, by the way. A speciation yeah. event is is when when two lines become so separated they can no longer mate and produce offspring. Yeah. So a wolf and my dog could could mate and still yeah, produce offspring. So they're true. they're still the same species. Well, according that's according to a, a the loose definition biology holds to. Um, okay. Yeah, it holds to species. Okay. Which I like, and and it's small enough an idea that I can wrap my head around it. So, um, but wolves are so good, they just know humans are dangerous. They just know. And all the hunters talk about how hard it is to hunt wolves. Yeah. It's really hard. Wolves, it's... you know, I think, what, 90% of wolf kills are from trappers, not from hunters. That's what you said. Yeah, yeah it's a huge amount. So you have to be able to, and one of the one of the one of the posts I saw on face or uh, uh, YouTube was somebody going in to check his snares. What's great about trapping wolves in the winter, in the in other months, it's I'm sure it's going to be different because in, in other months you have to be prepared to catch bears. Yeah, and I'm not prepared to catch. No, bears. we I watched that know. video. Remember, we I do remember, um, but also those type of traps are a lot more expensive. For wolf trapping, you can use what's what's called a snare. Uh, Super cheap. And you can set up. I see these guys. I watch a YouTube where a guy goes in, sets up 15, 20, 25 snares in okay. a single area that's frequented by wolves. And he doesn't have to come back and check them for three weeks. Jeez. Which is great. Yeah. Which is great because they're deep in the woods. I can't. If I had to check them every 72 hours, I couldn't trap wolves. Right. 
I just couldn't afford it. It's there too far away. But I want it. People ask me. I go. I tell them I'm gonna I'm gonna trap wolves. Where are you gonna trap wolves? Where I hunt elk. Yeah, <laughs> that is where I where I plan to do it. Um, and so so you know, there's there's a lot that we got to find out about how to how to set those up. How long can you let it sit there? Um, and and the snares will be easy to um, to pack a lot easier to pack and, and set up and um, I'm, I'm uh, and I'm interested to see what, uh, what can happen. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm fighting a cold too. I know I sound goofy today. You know, but... I was wondering. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, the it, coughing is what set me off. Sound of your voice took me a minute. I picked yeah, up on it. I, I'm getting over it. I'm on the man. It's I feel so much better than I did yesterday. Are you sure? Because it sounds like you're getting and worse as I, we're talking. I know. I know. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to trap wolves, and um, I'm excited to buy um, a vehicle that needs tracks, either a snowmobile or a four wheeler with tracks. Okay. Cause that's what I that's what you need. That's what I that's what I think I'm gonna need. Is a snowmobile with a trailer. And a snow or, cat or, or a, something with yeah, a cat a track, with something with tracks. Uh, yeah. 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 So there's a lot of cool options out there nowadays yeah. too. I, I see I saw one on Craigslist, only eleven thousand bucks. I saw a uh a um only a Cybertruck retrofitted with tracks. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I seen been seeing a lot of goofy Cybertruck stuff. Joey, my coworker, texted me today of a of a low rider cyber truck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And he goes, I found my cyber truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. So So anyways, the the it's a complicated, it's a complicated relationship with the wolves. Um I know, I know some people see wolves on a regular basis. Sure. They they just they're just in the right spot and they see them and they think they might be easy to kill. They're not. The elk are even smart enough now, and this this study confirms it. The elk are smart enough now to use human habitation as a shield against wolves. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. Isn't actually. that great? Yeah. But it makes it harder for me to hunt the elk because I can't kill them in city limits. <laughs> yeah, so so yeah, yeah. What an interesting <laughs> idea when you talk about Colorado. Yeah. Right? So many, so much human habitation is woven into the yeah. wilderness. Woven. How close are the wolves going to get? They're going to have to develop differently than they did in Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Yeah. They're going to have to develop differently in Colorado because of that, of that deep, those deep, that deep weave through, yeah. through the Colorado wilderness. So keep watching, keep, Keep paying attention to the Elk Season podcast. Yeah. We'll keep you updated know. on Colorado always. Do you want to give your fun fact now since we're talking about this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah fun fact. Um, you said you noticed you noticed it. Yeah. So so I I felt like uh, when Corey Jacobson went to uh, what was somewhere in southern Alaska, yeah. he got this elk that just had a, a much it had a much different hue to the color of its fur. It was darker. Yeah. yeah. It just felt like it was darker. And so the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation Facebook page um, posted uh, Fun f- or Elk Fact Friday or something. And it's, uh, hey, you know, elk have darker colored fur to help them soak up heat. And the further south you go, the lighter color their fur is. That would make sense because when I've seen the elk, say, like the, uh, the elk that live in uh, Arizona and New Mexico, they yeah. do seem brighter in color. Yeah. Yeah, but they need that to reflect the heat. Yes, so exactly. it's 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 just a a nice little um, adaptation that the animal yeah. has made. Yeah, and it probably stems from having a vast uh, history of being all across this continent. Yeah, that, that they had to have evolved that way to have that ability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah over. Yeah. Over thousands of thousands of generations. Can we go back to the speciation? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what because happened? well, because we're talking about right. All these elk have a different a different hue to their fur, right? But they're still the same species. Yes. 
So then we talked about dogs and how different dogs are, but they're still the same species. So when people say, so I, and this and this goes directly speaks directly to the argument people have against wolves being here in the first place. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Okay, they're not the right wolves. Well, they're the same species that are in Minnesota, that are in you know Canada, yeah. that are in Alaska. But then we talk about the subtle differences, right, between Alaska wolves, which are bigger and need to be bigger to kill yeah, bigger we- animals, and smaller wolves relatively speaking, that kill elk and probably even smaller wolves like the Mexican wolf that kill smaller yeah. prey. And I, I don't know how different it is in Minnesota. If if they're, if it's a mix between the deer and the moose, they might need to be the same size as an elk or as a wolf that kills elk. Huh. I don't know. So I'd have, to, I'd have to understand what their prey is. And when I read the book Decade of the Wolf, there are some packs that will start to specialize. And there was one pack in Yellowstone that was specializing in buffalo. Oh. So, yeah, their main prey is elk, is but, elk, but they can take down a buffalo. That's tasty meat. Yeah. And so, and, and I also watched a documentary of, of wolves in Canada that were specific to hunting buffalo. Huh. So, when I, when I talk about a speciation event and my, my half chihuahua, half shih tzu... Right, yeah. is the same species at Canis lupus. I don't think it is. I don't. I, oh, I need now. I, I need to understand a little bit better that dynamic. Yeah, it's 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 a curious thing, and there's probably more details to it. But it's but we talked about the genetic uh, epigenetic factors of wolves that yeah. are you know Canadian versus uh, American. They're they're just it's the same gene. Yeah. Makeup. It's just that you'll see differences and in, in variations based on habitat. Yeah, and there and those variations, right, are are determinative on their environment, right? So yeah, you could have you could you could send small wolves up to Alaska and they'll get bigger, right? You could send small Florida whitetail up to North Dakota and they're going to have to get bigger, right? And they're at those fawns that are born. They would respond to their environment yeah. in a way that would that would instruct their DNA. Yes, they're the same species, but after after subsequent generations, they're going to normalize. Yep. They're they're going to yep. be in that zone. And this so. happens with humans too. Yeah, in terms of access to resources. And so, uh, if if you are, and and, and I actually um, came across uh, this possibility with a conversation I had a couple years ago. And so let's say that your your mom and dad come from Mexico, but where you came from in Mexico, you didn't have a lot of resources. Right. But you, as as a child to your mom and dad, are twice their size. Yeah. So they came from Mexico from impoverished situations. That actually puts pressure on the DNA to stop the growth so that yeah. you can utilize the resources that you do have available to maintain function of body. But that doesn't mean the DNA can't do something different. And so what happens is mom and dad get to a place where there's more resources and your DNA is their DNA, but you have the resources for that DNA to, to lean further into the potential of what it can do. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. you see this in families that come from impoverished places where mom, dads, aunts and uncles, grandpa, grandmas might be smaller in stature, shorter. Indeed. Uh, and uh, But then the children are... Huge. Substantially, yeah. Substantially uh, different sized, yeah. And so you can see families marvel at that. Like, how did we have such big kids? But it really is rooted in the DNA and and what mom and and an appreciation for what moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas had to go through to get to the point that we're so huge when you think about us, even. You know, there is a there's a famous study, and I read a book on epigenetics, and there was a famous study about the Dutch and how Dutch men are really tall. I don't know if you've heard that. If you've known that about Dutchmen, that probably heard that somewhere. And uh, my uh, the the my old boss, the watermelon doctor, um, was Dutch, and he was six foot three. The, yeah. And uh, and I read a book on epigenetics, and it talked about uh, a famine that had happened, and 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 it had it had shrank the the size of people. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. And and the. And so they weren't known for being tall, but then they they started farming better and had some really bountiful years. And all of a sudden, these genetics come back, and there's whole generations 
taller than entire previous generations. Anyway, I wish yeah, I could. I wish I remembered more of that study. Yeah, there's there's so much that's hard to keep track of sometimes yeah. with this this cool stuff. Um, I want to ask you a question about roadkill because this is going to lead me into one of my, my yeah. things. When you hit an animal and it, it wasn't on purpose, a deer jumped out in front of you. Yeah. We talked about this, I think, even yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah, we did. You contact the Idaho Fishing Game and yeah. you can collect this animal, right? <coughs> now, Excuse me. W- you can collect the animal and then contact the yeah. Fishing Game. Yeah. So, so what animals are you allowed to do that with in Idaho? Any animal that is is fair chase big game. Right? If there well, is... I was asking you, because I know you've been doing deep dives I in have, the manual. I have. So I wanted to know, because I, I didn't do the deep dive to verify the Idaho law here, yeah. but, but I'll, I'll go into this. If but, you can trap it or hunt it, you can salvage it. So, That's the rule. Yeah. So, so it's, it's kind of vague, isn't it? Because that leaves the door open <laughs> for any big game animal. Any big yeah. game animal. Yes. Including bighorn sheep. Yes. And mountain lions and wolves. And bighorn sheep? You cannot do that in Montana. Okay, really? All of those species are, are that we just mentioned uh-huh. are available for that situation except for one. Really? Bighorn sheep. Really? Yes. So that's what I learned from this situation where an Idaho resident has been sentenced because they tried to pass off a Montana bighorn as Idaho roadkill. Yeah. How did they... How do they know? Well, DNA testing okay. because of because of how I, I think that's what they were saying is like the numbers of of, of bighorn are so small and they've been tracking them for so long yeah, they have they got deep a lot databases. Of, yeah, they do. So when they uh, are found out and and, are, and they report this, so I think what's interesting, if I remember right, I think the he 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 hit the the animal. Yeah, drove it back over into Idaho. And tried to report it. Hey, I got this bighorn. Yeah. But the DNA traced back to Montana. Okay. Interesting. And That's... Montana, so he's, I, 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 it was a while since I read this article, but something about uh, losing his license for two years and yeah. removing all, pre- like he's got a, a big fine he's got to pay. Yeah. Well, if there's, if there's that much shady stuff going on yeah did he even hit it with his car well i don't know was his car a piece of crap before and did he just shoot it i mean yeah <laughs> with that it's that kind of shady stuff going on yeah but but i just i found it interesting that it yeah. was specific in montana but to just not one animal to not, but not to that i would have expected that to be more in idaho as well yeah, like if I hit a bighorn sheep, I I wouldn't get to keep it. I need to turn it in. All that stuff. Yeah, because some of the laws are like if you find a deadhead, bighorn sheep, and yeah. even possibly because uh, I asked at a, at a uh, the hunter's ed class, I asked the the game warden. Yeah, uh, he's definitely said you got to report deadheads because we need to study. We need and you don't touch it. You just leave it there. You give us the coordinates. We go out and we look at it. Wow. And I said, what about mountain goats? He didn't have a straightforward answer like he did with mountain she- with uh, bighorn sheep. Yeah, but uh, he said you probably still want to report it. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I didn't know that either. And so, uh, but mortality it, but, rate is a, is a, is an important deal. Yeah. So, but 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 definitely there there's some sort of presence of importance on the bighorn sheep, and they they are susceptible. We have a, a herd here in yeah. Idaho that's that's got this influenza thing that's really bad for them. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, something I didn't know that I thought was interesting. That is interesting. So, all right, I like that tidbit, and I'm glad I I'm glad I did a deep dive into salvage, in the carcass salvage. Yeah, yeah, because understanding I, all the things you can and can't do. I was really hoping that you had that at access. Yeah, because uh, I'm like I'm gonna ask Harold live. I'm not gonna. I think I was intentional <laughs> with not looking it up because I'm like he's been doing a deep dive. He's been doing my homework. Yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to ask him. So nice. Yeah. Uh, It played perfectly. (laughs) Good deal. Uh, uh, So staying in the poaching realm though, this, this is more of a headline that speaks for itself. And it's just like, come on people. Like what's that? There was a sports clip, like, come on, man. Or whatever. Do you remember that guy? Uh, Uh, Anyway, it was an ESPN thing. Anyway, uh, come on. Oh, I forget what it is. I'm trying to still get it up, but I can't. 
Anyway. Come on, man. That's it. It's come on, man. Come on, come man. Come on, man. And I forget who it was. This uh, is a fabulous reporter on ESPN. But come on, man. All the follies and all the idiots, uh, idiot moves in like a basketball oh. game or on the field. And, and they do a clip series. Anyway, this is one of those. I haven't watched but, a lot of ESPN. I haven't either, but I've okay. seen this guy for whatever come reason. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't be doing that. Uh, Poacher made a poor choice when he shot a trophy buck while driving through a cemetery. Come on, man. Come on, man. Like, I hear a headline like that. And you know what I, I, you know what I think every time? <laughs> I said it out loud to you. Please not, Jared. Oh, please yeah. not Jared. Please not Jared. <laughs> so the picture that is there is is the uh, buck in question, uh, and then there's a picture of the shell casing that was left behind, and you can see the headstones in the background yeah. as it's circled on. So he's just going through. Boom! Got it. Oh, and he didn't, you know, click his casing. Graveyard bodies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, that, I, I left harder to that that than I should have. But yeah, you did. Anyway. Thank you. I appreciate that. I needed that today. You're welcome. <laughs> so uh, uh, we we have uh, we have a few more things. Not that we are in a hurry, but uh, it's only been 26 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. We better That's slow this right. down. I'm okay. Hold on a second. <coughs> <coughs> ah, that's better. <laughs> anyway, I'll I'll edit that part out. I wasn't worried about that. Uh, <laughs> there was you have a grizzly story about Callie, but I came across something else. Oh, it's here in Idaho, and I forgot to clip this. I, I don't know where yeah. I saw, but but uh, the return of grizzlies in Idaho has been. A, uh, there was a thing on uh, Channel Seven KTVB News recently. Yep, because they're they're pushing them into the uh, Bitterroot Mountains, which yeah. is central Idaho. Or I, I guess we did talk about Idaho. this maybe last yeah. time. So. But it's an ongoing debate. But yeah. we've also talked about, hey, you know, on the state flag of California, there is a grizzly bear, but yeah. it just feels ingenuine when there are no grizzly bears in that state technically alive. There or at least there in the have wild. Not been, there have not been grizzly bears naturally in the ecosystem of California for more than 100 years. It's heartbreaking. I every day, you know, I've been I've been doing the, I do my radio show, and I I've been doing a bit called Old West Stories, stories out of the Old West. Okay, and I just use Chat GPT. I go, hey, keep it around three hundred words, you know, in about ninety seconds, and tell me a story, you know. And I'll, every day, I just have this ongoing conversation with Chat GPT, and I'm like, now tell me what about this, and I cover bank robberies and stagecoach robberies and. Um, you know, violent storms and, you know, just any cool adventure from out West. Um, stories of, of loot stolen and hidden and then refound. And there's all, I mean, there's so many stories. There's so many stories and it's a lot of fun, but I try to keep it diverse. So I try to keep it uh, a little bit different. And I know that there's a lot of great grizzly bear stories out there. And so I like a good grizzly bear story. And I did one where uh, a guy was attacked, uh, a, a group of guys was attacked by a grizzly bear. Okay. And the guy attacked actually killed it with a knife. That was his, that's all he had left. After your muskets are fired, yeah. that's all you had. This week, I asked, I asked ChatGPT specifically about a grizzly bear in Utah. Because I know there's a lot, there was a lot of grizzly bears in Utah. Okay. And it told it told a story, so I got to tell a story about a grizzly bear with a name, Old Scar. Okay, is what they called him on the Wasatch Front. Oh, right through Salt Lake, yeah. right through current day Salt Lake, and this was back after the Mormons moved, but before the Civil War. Okay, so this is you know the eighteen eighteen fifties, um, and Old Scar was. And, and, and as, as I've read, and I've read a lot of books about trappers and about the West, you know, and Carter Niemeyer so, and wolves. So go, keep finishing. I have a question. Um, and so, and so I kind of, I've kind of learned a little bit about how grizzly bears behave. So what was your. Okay. So I just wanted to point of clarification. So yeah. you're asking ChatGPT for stories. Yeah. Verified stories that are real, or is it just that it's sort of hallucinating these stories for I, fun? I, I asked I asked ChatGPT to make sure the stories were true. 
Okay. And I, I know, I know. And Sorry, I, I, are I, they? I, I don't know. I, I just, just. Do. It is honestly, it is like the, the my favorite. It's the laziest part of my whole day. Okay. No, it's I, doing my I, stories. I'm out not of the saying old West. you can't do it. I, know. I just wanted a point of clarification for my own brain, just to know, so I could go. Okay, so it's. It, it may not, it's more like the Hollywood uh, slogan based, based on, on actual story. Yeah. It, it's, it's probably right. not, but it could be. So it uses, you know, Chad GPT uses specific names yeah. of people um, and, and some places, but it keeps the stories campfire vague. Right. Um, and I've, you know, I've asked it to keep it, you know, to keep it factual. That was important to me. And to try not to embellish too much, I just need the facts, and I can fill in the blanks. I can embellish. Oh yeah! <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, oh, welcome yeah. to the podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> embellish Central. So, um, so old Scar. What, what's interesting about these bears, and when in Carter Niemeyer's book, he talks of a grizzly bear who had been trapped probably more than any other grizzly bear, and and because he'd been trapped more than any other grizzly bear, he was really hard to trap oh yeah because they know the deal they don't like it mm-hmm. right and so grizzly bears have this have this understanding this learning that they do and they learn how to get away with stuff and this bear old scar back in the 1850s old scar found it pretty easy to take livestock hmm. right horses and sheep and cattle and uh, and it was it was it was terrible. It was uh, um, people people were losing livestock to this yeah. bear, and the bear would only attack at night, and they couldn't find it during the day. I mean, it was really smart. So they got a bunch of uh, not just a posse, but an assortment of posses to go out and hunt this bear. And anytime there was an attack, they'd be like, "Oh yeah, old Scar came in." All these guys would get together, and go, "Okay, let's go see if we can find him," and they never could. <laughs> They never could. So they had to call in an expert. Okay. An expert with a nickname Bear Claw, <laughs> who took, I think. I came by it. I, I think honestly. six weeks to track this bear down and finally kill it. Jeez. But but grizzly bears in Utah, um, all the books I've read out west um t- talk a lot about a lot of grizzly bears in Utah. Lots of grizzly bears. And so, as we as we move forward in the story of of the Western ecology and big predator country with wolves returned and now grizzly bears being exploding a part of the in conversation yeah. are, are growing are, are growing strongly, then we're going to be talking about what we're going to do with these grizzly bears. Are we going to hunt them? I believe we will. I believe someday we will. Probably Montana first. Yeah. Uh, that was the last place they stopped hunting them. Yeah, in 1991. And I could see a case for the greater uh, Yellowstone ecosystem. You know, between Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, I think you're going to see the hunting come yeah. back there first, just because the numbers. Because you can't because because the grizzly bears have always been there, and you can't actively hunt inside the park. Right. So adjacent hunting areas might allow that, but with alternatives like California. Well, we don't need to get a tag and have somebody have a fur. We can trap that grizzly bear and send him to California and have and have active breeding populations in in parts of California. So maybe if if they if they're gonna wait till that happens, then maybe we won't get to see grizzly bear hunts True. in our lifetime. Um Well, I'm good with uh not hunting grizzly bear. Yeah. Because I just don't, you know, I'd rather not run into one anyway. Yeah, me either. Even if it was on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Even if I'm ready. Even if I'm ready, I'm not ready. Yeah. I we, We've talked enough grizzly bear stories that it's just like, yeah. like even that one, even if that wasn't, uh, even if that isn't true. Yeah. It's a plausible story for a bear to just understand how to change its behavior based on what it doesn't like. I mean, it's just, yeah. and then it just becomes a nuisance. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, what the the grizzly bear from Carter Niemeyer's book, uh, the grizzly bear that had been trapped over and over again, they it was causing some trouble. Yeah, and they needed to bring it in, and they could not get it. Meanwhile, 
the Montana Wildlife and Parks Department has a camping powwow in Lincoln. During the campout, the bear makes an appearance, <laughs> and the fish and wildlife game the, game, the game wardens get to shoot that grizzly bear. Wow. And actually harvest that one, um, which was just... That's which crazy. is just wild. And it had to be at night, too. It was absolutely crazy. Wow. It was absolutely crazy. That bear was so smart. Was so smart. Sneaking in and all kinds of stuff. Like that, that story I read from Tough Trip Through Paradise with uh, Andrew Garcia yeah. and his wife. and the yeah, Grizzly that, bears are smart. They just... Yeah, they're, they're smart. Big and mean. Yeah. And they're they're grumpy. A little bit grumpy. A little yeah. bit. Um, <laughs> hmm... Running out of stuff quick here. Uh, I don't know where this took place, but it is quite an intriguing shot. I just took a screenshot. Leopard strolling through an open door. A 12-year-old calmly slips out and traps the animal inside. In this yeah. image, the cat is in the door, and right next to the door, about a foot away, is a couch or a bench with the kid sitting on the bench, and he's looking at the cat. And you can tell us a leopard. Yes, it and is a mountain lion. And it's America. Yes. Not a mountain lion, a leopard. Oh, that's a good point. That is a leopard. Okay. And that does not yeah. appear to be an American boy. Okay. Now that you bring out the obvious. Okay. <laughs> it's clear. Well, I, I know they've seen leopards in Arizona. But maybe I thought it was a leopard though in in the United States somewhere. I don't know if it's. A, I, okay. I don't mean to gen to conclusions on the boy. I have no idea. Well, I do it all the time, <laughs> especially for the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure this is how it happened, based on a true story. Wow, wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I wish I had more. Yeah, I have to go find that video. Yeah, that's just trippy. Just crazy. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll make the the social media rounds for a few years. Yeah. So we'll we'll see it eventually and can and can update that you kid's on. already on tour. Yeah. I'm the kid <laughs> that was right next to that cougar. Yeah. He's got a GoFundMe and everything. He's been to Disneyland. Oh, leopards are scary, man. You watch? You ever watch yet leopards hunt alligators? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, they just. I'm not. I don't like alligators. I want to see a grizzly bear before I see alligators. Yeah. Because, I mean, walking free in the water is a cool. <laughs> and to see a leopard go, hmm, crocodile or alligator, what a tasty snack. Delicious. Dude, that's a, that's a scary animal. That's a ferocious beast right there. <laughs> so, yes, it is. Very scary. And then other than that, I don't have anything else other than a boulder. The size... Of a boulder was removed from a highway. Yeah. The shape of a highway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a weird headline at KTVB. I, sometimes I'm pretty sure they do it on purpose just to make people talk because, hey, if you say it's a boulder, the yeah. size of a boulder. Wait, what was it? And how big was it? Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like, I like the news. You know, the news has to do things to keep us interested in it. They'll tell you that, that, uh, you know, there was a, a sinkhole that opened up the size of seven elephants. Yeah. Right? Or some dumb... They got some 14 hippopotamuses. Why for, would I be thinking in terms of hippopotamuses? For a while, I was... I was. It, it didn't take me long to feel convinced that our local newspaper here was intentionally leaving poor edits in the newspaper. Yeah. Just because... I wouldn't be... I wouldn't put it past them. That's... I misspeak all the time. Yeah. Just to get engagement. From from grammar Nazis and it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it just makes me laugh. I I just do it naturally. I don't yeah. speak very well, and in class I'll twist words together, like, yeah. and it'll come out, and I'll invent words, and the students will stop and be like, "Well, I guess that could work if you think of it this way," and yeah. I'll just some twist it somehow. But I, you know, I like, um, I like the jokes like from Dumb and Dumber, right? They're just they're just grammar mistakes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I wish I could think of them right now. <laughs> but you know, you put. But I like on making those mistakes on purpose, just to watch people cringe. <laughs> if I if I'm ever clever enough in class and I say something that's wonky, yeah, 
I think it's happened once or twice where I just rolled with it and I, but I was able to watch and see if there was a reaction, yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, but I usually stop on it cause it's funnier for whatever reason. I find it funnier to just go, well, that didn't work. Did it? You know? Yeah. And just make a big deal out of it, which is probably annoying to students, <laughs> but it's fun for me. And, uh, and messing up idioms is always a good one. Oh, I did that today. Oh man. Idioms are hard. Idioms are hard. My son, my son, Woody had a really tough time with idioms. And so for Christmas this year, he got a book of idioms. Oh, nice! Yeah, from his from his wife. So it was, it was fun. It was fun for him to go. Hold on a second, let me look that up. Because I I was I, I came home from I showed you a clip. Uh, my son's on spring break, and I had him in the radio station today. Yeah, we went we went fishing yesterday. We didn't get anything. What do you say when you go fishing and you don't get anything, or when you do an outdoor sport activity and you don't get anything? You say you got skunked. Totally. Right? I've been totally saying that skunked. my whole life. I didn't even know where I learned it. It's so old. My wife's like, is that a saying? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah. So I taught I taught Ozzy how to say it. It's kind of a fun way to say we didn't catch anything. We spent all this effort and time trying to catch a stupid fish we're probably not going to eat. <laughs> yeah. And and we and we we failed miserably. So it was fun to say, we got skunked. So I taught my seven-year-old to say, we got skunked. And I had him say, we got skunked on the radio. It was awesome. And uh, it was cute. It was cute. So we, got we, get, skunked. we get skunked all the time, elk hunting. <laughs> Most of elk hunting is getting skunked. You have not been skunked <laughs> twice. But I have always been skunked on the harvest, that is. Always I've, been skunked. I don't think I've ever been completely skunked on, on not seeing animals. Yeah. Because we've just gotten better at being able to do that. Yeah. Which is fabulous. Yeah, because we've been, there's skunked and then there's skunked. <laughs> and then there's, do you even know what you're doing? Yeah. Skunked. Uh, and so it was not for a lack of effort. It just was a lack of knowledge on how to yeah. direct that effort. Yeah, yeah. Which is, is it's important to get, oh, it's the uphill battles of being a first gen hunter. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we had, you know, I had all my haunts. Back in Montana, and 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 trying to find new areas um, in a new state was the most difficult. Yeah, was the most difficult because I just grew up going, well, I know everything down that road, and I know yeah. everything down every road, and I've been down them a thousand times each, and so it's not. I don't even have to look on Google Earth to think, gosh, would there be elk there? I just know. Oh, yeah. I, I bet there's elk up here. So, but but yeah. we, we've got the lay of the land now, pretty. Pretty much. And even if we had to go to a new spot. Well, I, I think I know what I need to do. In yeah. fact, last year, I hiked a new place That's right. with a new person. And got an elk. On the first day yep. that, we, that we went up there. So You went to a place I always wanted to go. Oh, my gosh. But when you get, told me your oh. story, I was like, I don't think I want to go there anymore. Nah, you do. Nah, you do. <laughs> you know you do. It's good. And there's a million other places just like it. Just right I around the corner from yeah. that place. That That whole valley is amazing. Yeah. It is a, uh, it is my home away from home. I, I, uh, if I am cremated for some reason, I want my ashes spread up there. It's just like, yeah. I, I just, it's for, well, it's been a let, uh, hold on 11 years this year yeah. since I've been going to that spot, that general area and driving I'm, up that same road, seeing that, watching the trees grow ever so slowly, watching the Creek change its course. Yep. All that stuff. It's, watching the campsites. The fires that kind of roll yeah, through there. I yeah. mean, it's, we've I've watched it for yeah. more than a decade. Yeah, that's crazy to yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the even the 2017 was seven years ago. Yeah, the 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 snow apocalypse, the big yeah. melt that ruined out the the main road we drove down. Yeah, yeah, it's big. It's a it, yeah. So it's been seven years, and now you either either a you don't know that that was a road once, or b there's another road right there. Yeah. Right? You can I maybe you, this year we'll end up being uh, we'll going, finally be like, yeah, let's up. go ahead and do what others probably shouldn't have been doing. But I kind of yeah. thought they'd come up and fill that in. <clears throat> Either fill it in or throw some boulders up so people didn't try to drive around it, yeah. but they just let it go and and naturally or quasi naturally. Well, the people naturally find a way through there that I guess quasi. How quasi? <laughs> What's that line from Doctor Quasi? Something I forget what he said. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Anyways, 
All right. Well, we'll we'll cut you off there. We'll leave you alone. I'm uh, my voice has been pretty rough this week from yeah, it's from the cold and stuff. So uh, we'll let you off the hook. I got a wolf class coming up this week, um, Saturday. It's nine to four. The... It's all day long. Wow. And so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'll be we'll be back with uh, with that report. More tales to come. See you then. All right. Goodbye. Cheers. Cheers.